Alrighty, what is it already? Patena here, back with another Hawkeye Star video, and today I want to be giving my first impressions on Akron. So it's been a little over 12 hours now since Akron has released as I'm recording this video, and I've been able to use her at E0 as one, mainly mine, and mine isn't that great, so I'm pretty relatable. But I've also used some friends E2 as one, I've also used a funny enough E6 Akron, and I will say it actually shocked me at every single level. So, I want to get my thoughts using her with double nihility, using her with one harmony support, mainly with one harmony support, and yeah, I will say I'm pretty satisfied, but I'll talk about it more in depth. Before I get into the video, if you guys hit the sub icon, it would be greatly appreciated, let's get straight into the video. So right after my summoning video, I did end up recording the guide where I did get to use her mainly in similar the universe for the footage. Past that, I did end up using her in Memory of Chaos, as you're seeing here. I did use the E61 in like funny domains and just other places. E2 on my friends, it's been really cool, I've just been seeing all the stuff. And honestly, I am very glad. While the difference uh, from 0 to E2 is very apparent, it's also not very apparent at the same time. I honestly think the people that thought you really need E2 for her, you're j I'm sorry, but it's just it's that you don't. I've been having complete RA usage with her at E0S1. And honestly, I'm really glad because I really didn't want to chase dupes for Akron because I'll be honest, as cool as Akron is, I'm not the biggest, biggest fan of her. I'm not saying I don't like her. I'm saying she's still really cool. But she isn't a character I wanted to chase dupes for. And if she was the case where the E2 would make that super big difference, it would have been slightly a turning off point. But thankfully, after using her at E0S1, all that kind of stuff, seeing how fast you really can get her ultimate at E0S1 with one Nehuity character definitely solidified my opinion. So I do think... Akron overall is probably, if not the best DPS in the game, even at E0S1 compared to others. Obviously, when you're comparing her to something like E2S1 Donhang, it becomes a little harder to compare, especially with all their dupes doing different things. But overall, I, I do definitely want to say she's up there. I haven't had much of a chance to test her without the light gun, but I have seen a lot of gameplay. Don't get me wrong, she's still fantastic without the light gun, but obviously, with how big the gap is between her signature light gun and something like an S5 Goodnight Sleep Well, the damage difference in her performance is extremely apparent. Especially with the fact that something with Good Night and Sleep Well, you can't really inflict a debuff. So that also does make it a lot slower. Besides that, I still definitely think she is in a very much usable spot without her light cone as well. Even in something like Memory of Chaos, she absolutely shreds through it. Obviously, she isn't too fantastic in pure vision. Not saying she's bad, but I'd honestly group her with most of the other characters. Like, obviously, something like Himiko or Gen D is going to be way better. Her to Jing Wan, like, they're going to be a little better, or a lot better even. But I still think she's definitely usable in pure fiction, but not the greatest. I haven't gotten a chance to use it yet, but I have, again, seen a lot of it. But for Memory of Chaos, she is absolutely at the top because she, is, as, she just shreds everything. The only issue I had was sort of fighting Sam, and that's just because I took a lot of damage. That and still, I'm sort of like trying to figure out what my playstyle wants to be with Akron. So it's still sort of me solidifying how I want to play with her. But overall, just using her has been really nice. So now, just giving a little personal insight on my build. I don't have the full optimal build for her, so I do not have attack percent boots. I don't have an attack percent orb, and I do not have the new set. Right now, I do have speed boots. I have lightning damage orb, and I have inner salsado. Just because, from the runs I did do on the Sumerian Universe, I did not get anything. So I can't use her at fullest potential at Ezer S1 yet. But she does have 49% crit rate as you saw earlier. But that's also amplified by the fact Fushuan gives 12 and Sparkle gives 10 because of her light cone. So I'm a bit carried with that. And then her crit damage is at a fine spot where her attack is a little low sadly. But even with all that, she is still shredding through everything I do. So it's still just that much of a showcase to show you that Akron even not doesn't need all these perfect stats to be this crazy and i'm honestly like i'm genuinely shocked at how good she actually is performing i knew from the get-go and her kit obviously that she was gonna be a fantastic character i just didn't expect her to be performing this well and this consistent for the most part i really just haven't struggled again besides the fact that maybe something against sam i sort of was almost about to die but besides that run for the most part there is no struggle I haven't obviously tried her yet with something like Universal Market and such, but I did end up watching my friends. So a lot of the more gimmicky stuff I have sadly had to watch rather than test. I will get around to testing it at first, but Universal Market seems very good. Sustain well, I haven't actually seen anything about that yet. And I can't try it myself because I do not have sustain builds for my well. He's just built as a DPS. But for the most part, I can also imagine that being really good if played properly. I'm honestly also very shocked at the damage your skill can do because I again I did mention that the skill would be fine and you definitely don't want to sleep on it. Her skill also just hitting that hard did also catch me off guard because I was like oh 
This skill is going to be mainly there for getting the thing, but I know it can do some decent damage, so it'll be nice. For the most part, you don't have to really think about it until or unless you have E6, because that's when it's considered ultimate damage. But then I started using it, and I'm like, damn, this actually does hit kind of hard. And then it just kept shocking me and shocking me and shocking me. And so eventually, I'm just like, damn, I actually do really like using this skill, not for just the charge, but for the damage it actually does. Also for the fact that inflicting Mirage Fizzle is really good. And for the most part, you don't really use your basic tech even with a Lycon, but obviously with times, it's really easy. Also, talk about her Lycon. The debuff, I thought, I don't know what I thought, but I expected the debuff to be a little more harder to apply, but practically every time you do attack, it's applied, so almost every time you do end up using a skill, you get two, basic tech one. So, the light card, in, like, just like, in my eyes, has also practically shot up more in value, just because I was like, oh, okay, it's easily here number one by a long shot, but potentially, the debuff apply wouldn't be too consistent, but then I'm like, damn, never mind, this is really consistent. And so now it's like even better in my eyes. And so now Bailey talking about her restriction and restrictiveness, I really do not think that is an issue. Running one at most Nihility teammate is so manageable. Everyone can practically have Gunaif and by now a lot of people do have Welt. Some people have Silver Wolf. A lot of people will have Pela, especially after this banner. There is just so many workarounds to just having one Nihility character. And it's honestly just pairing that with something like a Harmony Spore as for the most part I did use Sparkle. Makes it to where it's just so much more doable and you really don't have to worry about having two of them or having E2. I honestly think the E2 whole argument for that was a little, little overwhelming because I think a lot of people try to make it seem like, oh, you need the light cone and the E2 at the same time. While you can't argue you don't need the light cone, I obviously think that's way more priority. And as for needing the E2, I have to completely disagree. Not only running her with one Nihility character is very doable, but running her with two Nihility characters is also very doable. As I have mentioned in previous videos, other formats of also applying debuffs, such as Universal Market, having your sustained wealth fill both portions of sustain and Nihility, all those kind of methods also do tie in. But just running, as you see for the most part, me running Silver Wolf with the Harmony Sport, that's all I really need. I have also tried her with double Nihility characters, but I honestly think I do much rather prefer the Sparkle. Because obviously, while getting more of the original damage respectively is going to be very nice, Sparkle practically giving you a bunch of crit damage and for damage dealt some attack percent, and also giving you a whole extra turn, mainly the whole extra turn, I know it's 50%, but it's for the most part always an extra turn. That's obviously going to be better than any little original damage up. So I'm definitely glad that running a Harmony instead of double Nihility is better. Obviously, if you do have E2, you just have the full thing by just having one Nihility character and you get all easier. So if you do have E2, this is not really a issue for you because you already have the issue solved. And so for the most part, if you do have E2, you don't have to worry about much. Now, comparing her to more other DPSs in the game, such as mainly Jing Lu and Danhai, I definitely feel there are still things like where Jing Lu is technically the least restrictive of the bunch because all you really need is another healer. For Donhang, you kind of really want Sparkle just because of how much he eats skill points. And without Sparkle, he isn't the top of the top. That's mainly going to Ching Lu. And Akron, she does, while I do like advocate that the restrictiveness isn't really restrictive, I still do think Jing Lu is the overall most free option, but I definitely do think Akron has way higher damage output. I just think Jing Lu is a lot more manageable, especially because maybe some people, there will be some people that do not have Nehodi characters built, which is completely all right. But everyone will probably, if they do have Jing Lu, and even if they don't have the Jing Lu, everyone will probably have at least one healer built. Be it Lynx, new character Gallagher, they have one of the 5 stars, Pol Pol or Luocha. It's really easy to manage Jing Lu, and the damage output you get from her is so high to the point that it's like, obviously she's like top of the top. And then when you do have someone like Danhang, for the most part, even a lot of people will use him without Sparkle, even if they don't have Sparkle. But if you do have Sparkle, then it comes into the question where his damage output's like up there with them. I do definitely think her damage ties near Donhang's. I can't really say if her damage is same or higher than Donhang's. I think for the most part it's higher, but I don't want to be super adamant about that. Just because I can't have full Donhang like proof things, because I've used my Sparkle with Donhang, but I can't say for sure just because my Donhang himself is E0 S1. Or sorry, E0 S0. While my Aquan is E0 S1. But what carries my Donhang is the fact that Sparkle, mine is also E2 S1. So I can't really say for sure about that argument, but when it comes to Jing Lu and Akron, honestly, for the damage output, I do think Akron has a slight edge. But obviously, I wouldn't put it past like, oh, Akron does higher damage. Oh, she that must mean she's way better than Jing Lu. No, she, I would not say she's way better. They're different types anyway, so 
When something is not weak to lightning and is weak to ice, you'll probably take Jing Lu if you had her. If you take Akron over that, then you're probably just running Akron instead because you like her way more. But for the most part, you take Jing Lu in that situation, and if they're not weak to ice and they're weak to lightning, you take Akron. It's just that it's just how it is, the nature of the game. So that's why I don't really like comparing DPSs, just because I feel like, especially if they're different types, when they are the same type, like comparing Jing Lu with someone like Yanching is more justifiable just because they're both ice. And obviously, Jing Lu's damage compared to Yancheng is like Goku versus a Cyberman. So, don't really gotta get into that. But it's more, I think it's fair to compare DPSs when they are the same type. I think comparing damage is fine though, to see who has higher output. And that's why I do think Akron, for the most part, from what I've seen and what I've used, I do think Akron has the highest potential. But overall, that also will depend from everyone and their builds and all that stuff. So, it's not really something to mainly focus on. Now for the fact, for most personal question, do I really like using her and is she like anywhere near my favorite? While I do love her animations and using her overall, I definitely don't hate using her anyway. Will I say she's my favorite? No. I definitely do think I enjoy using something like Donhang over her with Sparkle or something like Zele and Mana Quantum. Soon being the DPS eventually I'm gonna build, along with the Fall Attack team once I do get Topaz, that I can already imagine being better. I think I do like using Akron way more than Dot though, but I can't really talk about that much. Too much I should say, just because I don't really like Dot in general. I know it's broken, but I don't really like using it, just because it's just kind of boring to me. But overall that, and then using Blade, I haven't really used Blade in a while, but I still think I would much rather just use Blade. But the damage Akron provides is so high to the point where I'd be stupid not using her. And so I know she's definitely going to be so many people's new favorite unit to use, which is completely alright, I can completely understand that. But I just have a different preference, and so I don't think she goes near my favorite unit to use or my favorite team build to use. But she's definitely on the higher side. She's still really fun, but just not as fun as the others to me. So yeah, that is my first impressions of Akron, so obviously because this is first impressions and it's only been a little over 12 hours, this is my change, I might end up liking her more, I might end up liking her less. Will I go for dupes for her? Probably not. E1 is fine, but I think E1 is more of a stepping stone to E2, just because the E2 is really good, and the E1 for a dupe isn't that great, but when you have it by proxy for having E2, then it's just a really nice bonus to have. And so for me, I don't really think I have a need of really wanting that E2 just to boost your damage, and I think I'd much rather save those dupes for Eventurn, because I like Eventurn's character way more. After looking at the story, he is now my new favorite Hoyo character. Expect the PFP soon. So I definitely think I'd have to definitely save for that. And so yeah, that's my first impressions of Akron. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know how you guys are enjoying her because I'm sure a lot of you guys are very much enjoying how she is functioning. 